all called the current national curriculum for ICT unsatisfactory at best. These organisations are worried that the curriculum doesn't stretch pupils enough or allow enough opportunities for innovation and experimentation. They all say that the curriculum has to change and change radically. Some respondents in a 2009 research study by eSkills actually said that the ICT GCSE was so harmful, boring, and or irrelevant that it should simply be scrapped. The Royal Society is so concerned that it spent two years researching the problem with universities, employers, teachers, and professional bodies. It's due to uh, publish a report this Friday, which I'm looking forward to reading. And because ICT has been so unpopular, there are now grave doubts about existing computer science courses for 16 to 18 year olds. It's a tragedy that just at the time when technology is bursting with potential, that teachers, professionals, employers, universities, parents and pupils are all telling us the same thing. The ICT curriculum in schools is a mess. So that's why I'm announcing today that the Department for Education is opening a consultation on withdrawing the existing National Curriculum Programme of Study for ICT from September of this year. Now, the traditional approach would have been to keep the Programme of Study in place for the next four years, while we assembled a panel of handpicked experts, wrote a new curriculum, spent a fortune on new teacher training just for that curriculum, engaged with exam boards for a new GCSE, only to find that all our work had become obsolete almost immediately. So we won't be doing that. Technology in schools will no longer be micromanaged by Whitehall. By withdrawing the programme of study which is centrally prescribed and imposed, we are now giving schools and teachers freedom over what and how to teach. We hope it will revolutionise ICT as we know it. Now, it's important for me to stress that the study of ICT, engagement with computer science and technology, will remain compulsory at all key stages and will still be taught at every stage of the curriculum. And for those who want it, the existing programme of study will remain on the web for reference. But no English school will be forced to follow it anymore. From this September, all schools will be free to use the amazing resources that already exist and are now being generated on the web. Universities, businesses and others will have the opportunity to devise new courses and new, more rigorous and attractive exams. And in particular, we want to see universities and businesses create new high-quality computer science GCSEs. And we want them to develop curricula which encourage schools to make use of the brilliant computer science content which is already available online. I'm pleased that OCR, one of our best exam boards, is pioneering work in this field. I'm also delighted that IBM and others are already working on a pilot. Facebook has teamed up with the UK-based organisation Apps for Good to offer young people the chance to learn how to design, code and build social applications for use on social networks via a unique new training course which they aim to make freely available online this year to potential users all over the world. And there are other specialist groups which have published or are about to publish detailed curricula and programmes of study, including Computing at School, which has been led by the British Computer Society and the Institute of IT, and Behind the Screens, which has been led by eSkills UK and others. All of these programmes have enjoyed considerable support from industry leaders. Imagine, this could be a dramatic change. In just a few years' time, once we remove the roadblock of the existing ICT curriculum, instead of children bored out of their minds being taught how to use Word and Excel by teachers, or even more bored, we could have 11-year-olds able to write simple 2D computer animations using an MIT tool called Scratch. By 16, they could have an understanding of formal logic previously covered only in university courses. They could be writing their own apps for their smartphones. This isn't an airy promise from an MP. This is the prediction of experts like Ian Livingston, who have already built world-class companies from computer science. Now, these new computer science courses will reflect what you all know. The subject is rigorous, fascinating, and intellectually challenging. After all, the founder of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg, 
let's get this confidence in line. Mark Zuckerberg is one of the most innovative and successful proponents of computer science today. But his computer science expertise is just one arrow in his intellectual quiver. He's also an expert in mathematics, science, French, Hebrew, Latin, and ancient Greek. And it's important that we see computer science taking its place alongside those subjects as a universally respected and rigorous academic discipline. Computer science requires a thorough grounding in logic and set theory, and it's merging already with other scientific fields into new hybrid research subjects at the cutting edge of science, like computational biology. So that's why I'm saying today that if a new computer science GCSE can be developed that meets the high standards of intellectual depth and practical value that we know the subject can reach, we will certainly consider including computer science as an option in our English baccalaureate of academically rigorous subjects. Now, although individual technologies can change day by day, they're underpinned by certain concepts and principles that have endured for decades. And long after today's people leave school and enter the workplace, long after the technologies they use at school are obsolete, the principles, if they're sufficiently rigorously embedded in the curriculum and examinations, which they will have learned in computer science, will still hold true. Now, of course, advances in technology should also make us think not just about the ICT curriculum, but about the broader school curriculum in a new way. Because in an open source world, why should we accept that the curriculum will always be one single static document? Why should it be a statement of priorities frozen in time? A blunt instrument which lands with a dump on teachers' desks and which is updated only by one central bureaucracy and only infrequently. Because we know that in ICT, schools can already lead the way when it comes to using educational technology and new and exciting ways. And they do it despite what government prescribes, not because of it. So I believe that the essential requirements of our broader national curriculum, while they do need to be specified in law, can be interpreted more flexibly and we can use technology creatively to help us develop the content of what is actually taught. So beyond a new slim down national curriculum concentrating on the essentials, we need to consider how we can take a more wiki, collaborative approach to developing new curriculum materials across the board, using technological platforms to their full advantage in creating something richer and more sophisticated than anything that's previously I uh, then take the uh, SD card and I encode it and then I stick it up to the TV through a 3G dongle and with one click I can send that file to YouTube, uh, the archive, Vimeo and several other um, video services basically. So how, how do people find it? Uh, they can go to um, Learn for Life, L E A R N, four, number four, L I F E, on blip.tv. Okay. You can, see, you can see all the videos there. And where are we at the moment? We're at the BET 2010 exhibition, and um, I'm on the uh, open source cafe, open source school stand, and I'm doing the media, video, and photos, and everything else. Pushing it all out. And so, if somebody came in, well, no, we won't do how to find the stand because it'll take me too long L20. to load this. L20. L20, okay. Well, on the ground floor. L20. Right, and you might be near here next year. Um, Possibly, yes. So. Oh, well, we'll keep the L20 bit in then. Okay, all right. Okay, Cheers. thank you. Oh, this is